My name is Fred Sullivan, owner of Lighthouse Music Services, and we would like to uh, congratulate you on uh, getting your new instrument, and you're about ready to put it together, so let's talk to you a little bit about some of the different uh, uh, care and maintenance items that you might need to uh, get started with your various instrument. We're going to start with a flute, and then we're going to go into a clarinet, and then we're going to go to a saxophone, and then we're going to go to trumpet. And uh, we hope that you get some valuable information out of these uh, videos, and let's get started. So you've decided to be in the band program, and you've decided to pick the flute. So you have either purchased it outright, or you've rented it, and you're all ready to start playing. So let's go through some uh, beginning steps to help you not only to be able to play successfully, but to put it together so that you don't have uh, maintenance problems. Um, let's go ahead and just talk about taking, taking the instrument even out of the case because we find a lot of times as a repairman with 40 years of experience, we find a lot of the problems that, that uh, we have with instruments is that they're not even taken out of the instrument properly and things bend. So let's start out with some suggestions to help you in, the, in that area. We always want to pick up the instrument um, by the ends and we want to hold them in such a way that uh, we're not touching the keys. And what I suggest with people is, and I see a lot of times, I see people will actually put them together and wiggle them in. And we can tell because the little ends get rounded out here uh, pretty badly. And uh, so what we want to do is just hold it, hold it right real close together and twist, twist it in very carefully and just straight in and make sure it's lined up. And then we also want to make sure that uh, as we're lining all the, the three pieces together, there is the head joint, the main body, and then the foot joint uh, that we'll put on here in just a second. And uh, those three pieces will all need to be put together and they're a metal to metal contact. One of the things that we want to make sure that we don't do is put any kind of a lubricant on here. Metal to metal needs to be uh, perfectly clean, and we'll show how to do some uh, wiping down in a minute here. But we want to make sure that uh, as, as we twist this on, uh, we're, we're, we're not uh, damaging the instrument by uh, wiggling it on. We also line it up so that the uh, center of this little hole right here uh, lines up with uh, the center of these keys. Let's also then put on the, the foot joint and we want to grab that by the end and then what I like to do is put my hand right here like this so that I'm not bending any keys and I like to put this up against my body so that um, I can just easily twist this in and then I can line it up. And that way, we're not bending any keys, we're not uh, uh, harming the actual mechanism of the instrument in any, any way. What we see a lot in the repair shops, <laughs> very, very often, is that we'll grab them either right here or right here and putting things together and we'll see, that we'll see the keys actually be bent this way. A lot of the keys will just be pulled together like that and, and then everything will go out of alignment and uh, we need to have these keys coming down uh, correctly in order for them to uh, operate properly in order for the sounds to come out properly. So uh, in putting the instrument together this way you will avoid having any problems. And then what we do recommend though is that we have an annual service uh, on that uh, and what we do there is we take the instrument completely apart and we dip it, in our case, we dip it in an ultrasonic cleaner. The, the body itself, we hand wipe the keys. Uh, we get the, all the stuff that's been built up over the years out of the instrument. Uh, just remember that everything that goes in your, ma it's in your mouth comes out through the, uh, into the instrument and goes down through the instrument. And so each time we play the instrument, when we finish, we want to make sure we clean it out. So we're going to go to that next. And so when we take it apart, we want to pull it apart like this. The first thing that we want to do, and it only takes a couple of seconds, is we use our, uh, our little cleaning rod. 
one end will have a little, a little mark right here. And the way we tell, uh, the, how we can tell that the, um, the little, there's a little cork in here with a little rod on it, and that has to be set in a specific place. And so we want to make sure that as we, uh, we can check that, we don't need to do that very often, but we don't want to tune with this little, what we call a crown cork. We don't want to tune with that. We tune by pulling this head joint in or out to help tune with the rest of the band. But we can set this up and once we get it, once we get the little line that's, that's uh, marked on, on this little uh, cleaning rod, we can set it in there once and pretty much leave it alone after that. But as we're going to clean, what I like to do is just put a, put a little bit of uh, like a uh, cotton cloth or paper cloth or even better a microfiber cloth and then we can run that through here and just clean out the saliva out of the instrument and that is probably the best way to keep keep the instrument clean. One of the things that uh, we find very often is we get a lot of calls from uh, people who say my pads are sticking and what happens there is we get uh, like we said earlier the all of the saliva that's in our mouth goes down through the instrument and it actually has um, alkaline in it and it attaches or, or it gets caught on these tone holes here and then it uh, also uh, gets onto the pads uh, which are underneath these keys and then it dries and then uh, as you push down as it's coming back up it makes this little kick, uh, kissing or, or uh, sticking sound and sometimes the key drags a little bit. And that usually is a pretty easy fix. Very often it can be fixed by just simply uh, purchasing at your local music store some uh, cleaning papers. Uh, and then what you would do there is you just lightly uh, push the cleaning paper between the tone hole and the pad and you just push down a couple of times and then you, uh, that will clean the dried saliva off of there and you'll, won't, you won't have a uh, sticky pad anymore. If, it's, if it still does that, you might check with your repairman because it could be a torn pad or it could be something else but uh, like a bent key. But uh, very often the problem can be fixed just with simple uh, cleaning papers. For the outside, we can wipe off our fingerprints because our finger, fingers have oil in them and they get onto the, uh, onto the surface of the instrument and then dust starts to collect and it starts to build up and so this is why we want to help also just wiping over the surface of the of the instrument before we put it away each time and again as we put it away we want to make sure that we're not touching the keys and bending the keys as we put the instrument away And this will, doing it this way will ensure that you have uh, a lot of enjoyment learning how to play and that you will keep your instrument uh, in good playing condition for a, a long time. We uh, hope you found this information useful and uh, if we can be of any help, contact, contact us at lighthousemusicservices.com and uh, check, or check out some of our other videos. Thank you for watching. When you don't play an instrument, you're not as well-rounded. When you're not as well-rounded, you don't do as well in school. When you don't do as well in school, you don't get into the college you wanted. When you don't get into the college you wanted, you attend a rival college. When you attend a rival college, you go to their football game. When you go to their football game, you accidentally cheer for the wrong team. When you cheer for the wrong team, the football team holds a grudge. And when the football team holds a grudge, you wake up with 17 ducks in your room. Don't wake up with 17 ducks in your room. Play an instrument.
name is Fred Sullivan, owner of Lighthouse Music Services, and we would like to uh, congratulate you on uh, getting your new instrument, and you're about ready to put it together, so let's talk to you a little bit about some of the different uh, uh, care and maintenance items that you might need to uh, get started with your various instrument. We're going to start with a flute, and then we're going to go into a clarinet, and then we're going to go to a saxophone, and then we're going to go to trumpet. And uh, we hope that you get some valuable information out of these uh, videos, and let's get started. So you've decided to be in the band program, and you picked a saxophone. And uh, you uh, either purchased it, hopefully, or rent rented it from a re reputable local music store. And um, we, what we want to do is we want to show you some, some ways to put it together so you'll be successful, so you'll have uh, very few maintenance problems. And uh, so let's get started. First of all, you have the main body of the instrument, and a lot of people will grab it right in the body of it. What we see in the repair business is a lot of bent keys due to grabbing instruments uh, incorrectly. So uh, what I would suggest really is let's just always take it out from the bell side first, and this will prevent uh, bending any keys. And then you're going to want to take off this uh, little end plug, and it's critically important that you leave uh, the end plug in while it's not in use because very often manufacturers will make this little, this little arm right here uh, extend out beyond the end of this. And if you don't have the end plug on, very often this, this little piece gets bent or, br or broken, it's actually broken off, and uh, a little bit difficult to fix when it's broken. Uh, so it's always best, this is very inexpensive, and it's very, very good to keep this uh, in, in there, it's called the end plug. So you just take that out when you're ready to assemble the instrument. You're going to want to also then put on the, the, uh, one of the three pieces that make up the saxophone. And the next, uh, next one is the neck, and you'll notice that I'm grabbing it like this. We don't want to grab it clear out here to put it on. We want to grab it way up close so that it's right uh, almost on top of this. This is the uh, neck tenon, and this is the, the uh, saxophone receiver. And we want to just put it on like this, make sure that this little screw is backed off so it's not tight. And then we want to just twist it on uh, with a motion somewhat like this, rather than grabbing it out here and uh, wiggling wiggly it on like this. We want to twist it in as close as we can. We get a lot of repair work uh, in where the neck tenon has been rounded off and the neck is very, very loose. And uh, we want to try to uh, have you be able to avoid that. We can also develop leaks in there if we don't take, uh, if, if we do that. And if, if the instrument is leaking from here, it's going to leak all the way through the whole instrument, make it hard to play. So we want to avoid that. So we want to put this on uh, like that. Tighten this up. It should tighten up enough that it doesn't, uh, you don't want to have to go too tight on it. And uh, it should just bar it should have to barely tighten, just like a quarter turn. Uh, once you, get it, once you get it tight. And uh, one of the things that we see so often in the shop is uh, we get calls from people who say that my instrument plays high all the time. It's like I've activated the octave key where this, instrument, where this key is open and it stays open all the time. And we see that uh, because this, this key right here, this arm right here, has been bent up. So that, that is one of the things that you're going to see very, very often. And what that does is it makes this part of the, uh, the key stay open. And uh, uh, so we want, to, we want to avoid that. We want to put, uh, by putting on the neck just like this. Okay. Next, we're going to want to put on our neck strap. I would suggest, if you can, to get a neck strap that has a metal piece on there um, and hopefully without a hook you won't be um, taking a chance of having it break. Something else that we also see very very often is that when we're not playing so many people will actually uh, take their arms and put them like this when they're sitting on their, in their lap and we've actually seen a lot of instruments come in that are bent 
this way, uh, bent, bent like, kind of like a crescent moon, bent like that, uh, strictly because they've, they've held on to it like this. So if you could actually put this on your, on your knee while you're sitting, hold it something like this, um, that would really aid in keeping the instrument in alignment and in good playing condition. We do like to see them once a year uh, for, an, for an annual maintenance. Uh, part of that is because everything that is in your mouth goes down through the instrument. So anything that you've eaten um, goes down through, through the instrument and stays there. So um, we, like to, we like to clean that out uh, and then re-oil and do a, uh, refresh the instrument each year. Um, we want to put on the, uh, the mouthpiece next. Uh, that's the last of the three parts. Uh, we have a cap. The cap is critical to, to uh, keep on the, the, the mouthpiece at all times, when it, well, whenever you're not using it. And uh, we want to do that because this portion of the mouthpiece right here is very critical for how the instrument will play. And if you have it, if it's chipped or if you drop it um, and it gets rounded over, uh, the reed that uh, rests on there will not uh, be able to, to provide the proper seal. So we need to make sure that uh, uh, this little cheap cap stays on there whenever the instrument's not being played. Okay, and so what we recommend, you'll need some reeds with this as well. And you're also going to need some cork grease. Let's go ahead and take this neck back off. And we'll show you here. We want to make sure that this, this uh, cork is lubed up. We don't want the uh, mouthpiece to be pushed on there too tight. Now you don't need to use this every time. Um, it's mainly, and you're going to have to get a feel for this, it's mainly when the mouthpiece feels like it's uh, hard to push on. Once it gets easier, once it gets a little bit easier, you're not going to need to use this every time. So uh, for right now we're putting some on. And at this point now we'd like to put the reed on. This is the other, uh, the other piece of the equipment that you need. Uh, these you'll be replacing uh, probably uh, mo more frequently than any others. You can either buy them individually or in small packets of three or buy the box, which is the most economical way to buy them. Um, your, your instructor will tell you which, which uh, number to start with. Um, lots of people start with a, start with a two and a half, but uh, uh, have your instructor tell you what they prefer for you. Um, one of the things that we find is that uh, when people are putting reeds on the instrument, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll put the reed on first, and if the reed actually sticks up over the top of the, the mouthpiece, a lot of times when you put the ligature on, which holds the reed onto the instrument, we we'll actually miss and hit and, and chip up the reed that way. So another way, another suggestion would be to maybe put the ligature on first and back up these uh, ligature screws a little bit and uh, hold, hold that up there. Um, and then put the thick part of the reed uh, onto the instrument and then slide everything down together. And that will help prevent this, uh, the thin part of the reed from cracking or breaking. And then you can assemble it uh, as you're taught by your instructor from there. And then you tighten it up. And when you're taking it apart, you want to do the same thing. Take the ligature off first, and then take, take your reed. And what we recommend on reeds is that you have one for each day of the week. What you do is you allow the, the, the reed to dry um, so that it dries out thoroughly. Where reeds wear out the quickest is when you play the same one each day, every day. They get soggy and they don't have a chance to dry out uh, at, the, at, the, at the tip. And they'll basically just break, break down and they, they won't last very long. So uh, it's a good idea to rotate these so that you're using one each week. And uh, you can label them, or uh, uh, Monday through Friday, or you could put a dot, color coded, whatever, whatever you like. Um, okay. And uh, when we're finished playing each time, what we want to do 
uh, just real quickly, what we can do is we want to take a swab, a good high quality swab. Make sure that the when you when it unravels that you get uh, the entire swab to unravel. We find a lot of times that uh, we forget to do that because we're in a hurry and uh, some of the end of this gets bunched up and it ends up getting stuck right in this area. So what we do is uh, we take the, uh, the weighted part of this swab and this happens to be a silk swab. Silk or mic microfiber uh, in our opinion seems to, be, seems to work really well. Put this in the bell, let it, let it come all the way through and let it work its way down and then have it come out like this end here and then just pull it through and that will do a real good job of getting the inside cleaned out then you can uh, take this take this and bunch it up wrap it around and then you can actually uh, wash this as, as often as you as you care to uh, since it's silk and it, it'll, it'll uh, absorb all, everything that's in your mouth that comes out of the instrument. We also, it's a really, really good idea to use a good high quality cloth, either cotton or uh, a microfiber cloth. And uh, we, have we have fingerprints or we have oils on our, on our fingers that uh, will actually adhere to any, the surface of the instrument. Um, and then what happens then is that dust will collect uh, dust and dirt um, where that oil is. And so it's good to keep this uh, clean, the surfaces of your instrument cleaned. And that can be done uh, each time you play it as well. And it doesn't take very long. And then you want to make sure that uh, you put the end plug back in, hold it, by the, hold it by the bell, and then stick it back into the instrument. Uh, we hope that this information has been useful to you. And if you have any other further questions, you can uh, see our website at uh, lighthousemusicservices.com. When you don't take music lessons, you think you're better than you really are. When you think you're better than you really are, you brag to your parents. When you brag to your parents, they talk. When they talk, word spreads. When word spreads, everyone you know hears about you. When everyone hears about you, they want to hear you play. When they want to hear you play, you get scared because you're really not that good. And when you get scared, you hide in your closet with canned food. Don't hide in your closet with canned food. Take music lessons. My name is Fred Sullivan, owner of Lighthouse Music Services, and we would like to uh, congratulate you on uh, getting your new instrument and your about ready to put it together so let's talk to you a little bit about some of the different uh, uh, care and maintenance items that you might need to uh, get started with your various instrument. We're going to start with a flute and then we're going to go into a clarinet and then we're going to go to a saxophone and then we're going to go to trumpet and uh, we hope that you get some valuable information out of these uh, videos and let's get started. So you've decided to be in band and you've either rented or purchased a instrument. In this case, you've decided on the trumpet. And uh, so what we want to do is show you some uh, things that you can do to maintain your instrument and to uh, keep it lasting a long time. Uh, we uh, do like to see them once a year and for annual service because everything that's in our mouth actually goes into the instrument. But let's start by taking the instrument actually out of the case. What's uh, very important that we make sure that we don't put any books or any kind of uh, uh, thick objects um, wh while the case is closed in here because it will, it could actually bend um, pieces of the uh, tuning slides in and push them into the valves, making the valves stick. As you've probably noticed, uh, the way I pick this instrument up is I pick it up by the valve stems and the, and the finger buttons, and uh, then we hold it um, just about like that, whatever feels comfortable to you, but right hand in the, in the pinky and the, the finger ring, and then these three fingers here, and then your thumb will go somewhere uh, on that first 
valve section, wherever you feel comfortable or wherever your teacher uh, suggests that you hold it. Uh, and then your left hand holds the bulk, holds the instrument, the weight of the instrument. And uh, that's a good way to do this. Um, then, uh, basically, there's, there's not a whole lot that you need to do. Um, if you care to, a lot of uh, people will buy uh, maintenance kits. We like to see uh, and do a d deep cleaning uh, once a year. And the reason for that is everything that is in your, your mouth ends up going through the instrument. And uh, so what happens is the, what's in our mouth actually begins to attack the raw brass that's on the inside of this instrument. And uh, we like to uh, do preventative by uh, deep cleaning once a year. But, but uh, a lot of times what's really good is for you to do some maintenance on the instrument yourself in between those times. And we can get a, a kit, a maintenance kit, um, or either get the entire kit or get things individually. And uh, that will be a uh, what we call a snake. And it's a coiled piece of wire with some brushes on it. And what this allows you to do is uh, actually get come around, uh, come around these curves as you're, as you're cleaning, you can push the brush into all of the curves as you're cleaning it uh, yourself. And what we would recommend there is uh, about once every th three months, it, it, it depends on what, what your band director suggests, we suggest about once every three months um, that you just take the instrument apart. and then use lukewarm soapy water and uh, you can take you can take your snake and clean out clean out it'll go all the way through just brush out brush out the debris uh, in there and then uh, we can also take the valves themselves apart and all you need to do is take this section apart by itself, lay it on a, on a soft cloth. And I, I'm not going to take all of those off, but we have valve brushes that you can use and so, lukewarm soapy water and uh, clean out the valves. And uh, then we also have, uh, in, in your kit, you'll have a um, mouthpiece brush that can be used to, with, again, with lukewarm soapy water can help you clean the mouthpiece up. Um, in here and like this. And then you can wipe the whole thing down with a good high quality cloth such as a uh, cotton or a microfiber cloth and wipe this down. Um, also, uh, this would be about once every three months. But uh, you're going to want to put uh, oil on the valves on a regular basis. And for that, many, many people take the entire instrument or t take the, uh, the valves out all the way. But that isn't really necessary. You, just think you can take them out just until you see this part right here. That's all that's really necessary. Just take it up to this far, and then you need just uh, three or four drops of oil right on that part. And then you want to listen for a click as it goes down into a uh, slot. And I don't know if you heard that or not, but uh, there is a click, and then the valve, the valve itself will not move back and forth. And then you can tighten this down. And you'll do that um, probably every time you play. That really is about all that you need to do in uh, maintaining your instrument. We hope that the information that we gave you will give you some help. And if you have any further questions, uh, you can contact, it, contact us at uh, lighthousemusicservices.com. Thanks for watching. Oh,
Fred Sullivan, owner of Lighthouse Music Services, and we would like to uh, congratulate you on uh, getting your new instrument, and you're about ready to put it together, so let's talk to you a little bit about some of the different uh, uh, care and maintenance items that you might need to uh, get started with your various instrument. We're going to start with a flute, and then we're going to go into a clarinet, and then we're going to go to a saxophone, and then we're going to go to trumpet, and uh, we Hope that you get some valuable information out of these uh, videos, and let's get started. So you've decided to be in the band program, and you've chosen a clarinet. Um, let's. We want to show you a little bit about uh, a safe way to put the instrument together, so that you'll have the fewest amount of problems, and your instrument will be very reliable for you. Uh, hopefully you've uh, either rented or purchased one from a reliable music store. And uh, so let's just uh, go right to it here and uh, show some ideas for putting together the instrument to uh, keep it playing well for you. Uh, first of all, I never pick the instrument up from the center because the opportunity there is to bend keys um, and really just uh, uh, put them out of alignment. So I always pick them up right out of the case um, so that my hands are away from where the keys are. And uh, when I'm putting the instrument together, what I will always do is on the left hand, you play, uh, put, you put your hand normally when you're playing this way with the thumb right here and these fingers right here. So I just hold the instrument like that. And what that does is that allows this little uh, upper ring key to open up completely so that it's not going to, um, as, you, as you wiggle the, the bottom part on, it's not going to uh, damage this key. And we'll see that right now. When we pick up the lower joint, I pick it up usually like this so that, again, I'm not uh, holding any of the keys. And we take this and wiggle it on. We don't want to wiggle it this way. This will either break or uh, round out the, uh, the, te the tenon on here. This is the upper joint. This is the lower joint. And we want to actually just twist it on. And when that happens, um, what I like to do is uh, I like to align the, the uh, mechanism so that these are all in a line right here. And then, then uh, do the adjustment so that basically you want to make sure that these, are, these two uh, ring keys are coming down absolutely at the same time. What you may need in assembling 
this, uh, all of these parts is some cork grease. And the cork grease is applied, it's kind of like chapstick, and it, it, is it apply, it's applied to the uh, tenon corks like this. And it's always good to have an extra little uh, piece, of, piece of a towel around so that you can uh, wipe off the excess and then it won't, doesn't get all over the whole instrument. At this point, then you can put on the bell. And uh, again, you don't want to uh, put your hands around so that you're bending any keys. And, um, and you can also put the barrel on. And then you have the barrel, the upper joint, the lower joint, and the bell all together. And then at this point, you can take out the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece should come with a cap and um, a lot of stores will uh, either uh, provide you with a new one or one that's been um, highly cleaned and they'll wrap it. And then you have a ligature and the mouthpiece that goes with it. And uh, a couple other things that you'll need to be able to play the, the clarinet is some reeds. And uh, some stores will provide one, one of them with uh, your rental uh, or with the purchase. You can also buy them in uh, bags of three or contain packages of three, and you can also buy them by the box. So there's lots of options for you there. Uh, but what, what I find also is that uh, very often, uh, first time when you put it, put it on, we want to put the reed on after we put it in our mouth uh, to get it wet to let it vibrate better. Um, we'll put it up just a little bit too high and then try to put the ligature on and that will sometimes if we miss it can actually break or crack the reed. So one other way to do it that might work really well for you is to put the ligature on first, back up these uh, ligature screws way out and then put the thick part of the reed on and uh, slide, slide the reed on this way. And then you can adjust it and then uh, adjust the reed to the ligature on the mouthpiece uh, just like you normally would. And that will, um, that will help prevent from breaking as many reeds. When you finish playing, you want to take the reed off each time. Um, if the reed does not dry, on the back, we've had lots of uh, seen lots of mold over the years. We start growing back in there, so we want to take this off and let this dry. What we recommend uh, to all of our customers is uh, to, to have it in a reed guard and have have a reed that you play only once a week, uh, each uh, so that you're playing one on Monday, one on Tuesday, a different one on Wednesday, a different one on Thursday, uh, and you rotate the reeds, allowing them to dry out completely, and this helps. Uh, helps the reeds last longer, and uh, so we we have assembled those. We're ready to play. We're ready to take it apart now. And what we always need is some sort of a good, high-quality swab. This particular one happens to be silk. And what we want to make sure is when we're doing this, and we do this each time we finish playing, we want to make sure it's unraveled completely. A lot of times we'll see these, uh, we'll forget to fold, uh, unfurl them all the way, and this fold will actually be up in here and it'll get stuck. So we want to make sure that it's completely uh, unfurled out. There's a weighted end on the cord, and we can take the instrument, turn it upside down, and run it through the bell until it comes out, uh, the, the weighted part comes out this way, and just pull it through. And now you have the instrument cleaned out on the inside. And you can fold this up and uh, put it away from the instrument. And then uh, you can also wash this as you need to. Uh, good idea to do that on a regular basis. And then the other thing is you're putting it away. It's also a very good thing to uh, take some kind of a, a cloth. This happens to be a very good high quality microfiber cloth. We have oils on our fingers. It's a really good idea just to wipe over the surface because uh, these oils that we have in our, on our fingers uh, attach to the keys and on the body and then uh, dust and dirt 
starts attracting to there and uh, gets the instrument very dirty. So it's good just to wipe, wipe over the outside of the instrument and then it's ready to be put away uh, for use the next time. Uh, so we hold it again away from, uh, so they're not bending any keys, twist each piece off and we can pull, pull the barrel off and we're not touching the keys as we're putting it in and we hope you enjoy the, ins the information that we've given you. Hopefully it's helpful to you and if you have any other questions please see our website at lighthousemusicservices.com When you don't maintain your instrument, it doesn't stay in tune. When it doesn't stay in tune, it makes funny noises. When it makes funny noises, people laugh. When people laugh, you get paranoid. When you get paranoid, you get a nervous twitch. When you get a nervous twitch, people get scared to sit by you. When people get scared to sit by you, you buy a monkey. And when you buy a monkey, the monkey gets scared to sit by you. Don't buy a monkey that's scared to sit by you. Maintain your instrument.